now here we will see that that what is the actual term work in the physics so in physics work done is actually the product of force and displacement so force into displacement the scalar product of force into displacement is called work done so this is the basic term in general we say that force into displacement is a work now using this relationship we will derive one simple example that is your example number 6.1 of textbook page number 115 in this question we are given that that find the angle between force that is we are given that force is equals to 3i cap plus 4j cap minus 5k cap that is the direction of force in any unit then we are given displacement displacement as the combination combination of that is 5i cap plus 4j cap plus 3k cap so this is also the value of displacement we are asked to find out that angle between force and the displacement so we have to find out angle theta between force and displacement and we also need to find out the projection of force on displacement so we also want to know that projection of force on displacement d so how to do this question first of all what we will do we will apply the dot product between these two vector quantity so our first step is to have dot product of two vectors that will be we can say that x component of force to the x component of displacement plus y component of force to the y component of displacement plus z component of force to that z component of displacement now we are already given these quantities and their magnitude fx we are given as 3 and dx we are given as a 5 plus fy we are given as a 4 while dy we are given as a 4 plus fz we are given as a minus 5 and dz that is given as a 3 now we will apply these values so we can say that this is equals to 15 plus 16 minus 15 and that will be 16 so the dot product of force into displacement will be here 16 unit now we want to find out angle so obviously we have the equation that is what that force into displacement fd cos theta and therefore we can say that therefore to find out the angle what we need actually 
we need in the manner f dot d that is we have obtained above that is 16 unit so this dot product is produced over here <coughs> we also want to get the term in a form of angle so we have equation that is force into or force dot displacement is equals to magnitude of force into magnitude of displacement into cos theta that is the angle between these two quantities and therefore when we make cos theta as a subject cos theta will be like dot product of f and d upon mod of f into mod of d now we have two quantities f and d so here we have mode of f that is nothing but we have previously derived that is f of x square plus f of y square plus f of z square and then the sum of all the values into the square root so now we can simply write down that your fx component is 3 so it will be 9 plus fy component is 4 so the square will be 16 plus fz component is minus 5 so the square will be 25 and we can say ultimately it is about 25 plus 16 plus 9 that is root 50 <coughs> so this will be about root 50 in a unit that is again unit in our given term now we are also given a displacement so for displacement also we have another quantity say for displacement we can say it as mode of d that is dx square plus dy square plus dz square and into the square root now when we simplify it what we will get we can say that dx component that is 5 so that is 5 square 25 plus dy component that is 4 4 square that is 16 and dz component that is 3 3 square that is 9 so this will be also root 50 so this will be also root 50 in its square root unit now just by applying these values in the equation above that i have written here that is with equation number one if we replace all these things into this equation number one we can have the equation value that is cos theta is equals to f into d that we have already obtained that is 16 upon mod of f that is root of 50 and mod of d that is also root of 50 now we can say that this is 16 upon 50 and that would be about 0 0.32 so here we can say that the angle between force and displacement is cos inverse 0 
so this will be your first answer for the angle between these two we are also asked to find out the projection of force on displacement obviously projection of force on displacement can be written as as here we have definition of work we can say that this is f dot d if we want to find out projection of force on displacement we can say that d into f cos theta so we have to do nothing but we have to just make f cos theta as subject and w over d that will be your answer so here f cos theta would be w upon d and that will be the projection of force onto the displacement so here if you define that term that is work done as a 16 and the mode of d that is about root of 50 then this would be the projection of force on the displacement so here again this will be the projection of force on the displacement so this is your example number one that is given in textbook current theory that is called work energy theorem now what this theory contain and what is the part of this theory so the statement of the theory is that the change in kinetic energy of a particle is equals to work done on it by external force now we have to prove this statement to prove this statement what we need to do is a very simple thing that we have to just apply our well-known motions equation we know already that we have three motions equation with constant acceleration out of that we will use the equation that is v square minus u square is equals to 2 a s here we already know that that v square is that is v is a final velocity u is initial velocity a is constant acceleration and s is displacement now in this equation we want to compare that is work with energy so that is work energy theorem is actually the combination or the relation between work and energy here we will compare it with kinetic energy as well as potential energy so here in this case what we will do we will multiply this equation number one with m by two both the side so when we multiply it with m by two both the side we can see that we have equation like one half mv square minus one half m u square is equals to two one half m into a into s now that is visible with the part part that i have colored with red green and yellow here in red color that is given that is final kinetic energy the green color is given that is initial kinetic energy and that yellow part is the combination that shows the f equals to m into a so that yellow part gives us the part condition of the force now we compare and accumulate these two equation in our intention that we want to derive that is one half m v square minus one half m u square so we can say that final final kinetic energy that is kf minus initial kinetic energy that is ki is equals to ma into s here ma is called force s is displacement and that is ultimately force into displacement in a vector form because force is also vector quantity and that s that is a displacement is also a vector quantity but the left hand side here that is a change in kinetic energy and energy is a scalar quantity now when we 
कंपेयर इट वी कैन हैव के एफ माइनस के आई दैट इज डेल्टा के दैट डेल्टा के मीन्स दैट इज अवर चेंज इन काइनेटिक एनर्जी एट द सेम टाइम डब्ल्यू दैट गिवज अस द इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट द वर्क डन सो हियर वी हैव कन्वर्टेड दैट इक्वेशन दैट इज वी स्क्वेयर माइनस यू स्क्वेयर इज इक्वल्स टू टू ए एस इन टू डेल्टा के इज इक्वल्स टू डब्ल्यू दैट इज कॉल्ड वर्क एनर्जी थियोरम एंड इट इज वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थियोरी फॉर अस नाउ वी विल सी द एग्जाम्पल नंबर सिक्स पॉइंट टू विच इज ऑल्सो द पार्ट ऑफ वर्क एनर्जी थियोरम सो दैट एग्जाम्पल नंबर सिक्स पॉइंट टू फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल सी दैट वॉट द इंफॉर्मेशन दे हैव प्रोवाइडेड अस फर्स्ट इट इज गिवन दैट इट इज वेल नोन दैट a rain drop falls under the influence of a downward gravitational force and the opposing resistive force the latter is known to be proportional to the speed of the drop but is otherwise undetermined now considered a drop of mass 1 g falling from height of 1 km it hits the ground with speed of 50 meter per second now they have asked that what is the work done by the gravitational force and second what is the work done by the unknown resistive force here we have to check this unknown resistive force resistive force is always opposite to the motion and therefore in that case work done will be negative and the normal force that is the gravitational force is always attractive and it is towards the ground so first we will see that what is the change in its kinetic energy when object falls on the ground now here for the rain drop its initial velocity is zero and the final velocity is given that it hits the ground with the speed of 50 meter per second so the final speed that is v is given as 50 meter per second so this is the first information provided second thing that is given the mass of the drop so we are given a mass of the drop that is 1 g that is 10 raised to minus 3 kilogram because we want to convert it into si system the height is also given that height is given about about 1 km so we can say that here h is about 1 km that is also about 10 raised to 3 meters now what is the actual question that they have asked let us see that what is their basic question is we can here say that suppose we consider here the cloud in the sky that is about 1 km at height from the earth let us consider that the earth to be on the ground that is say here somewhere the earth that we consider this is our earth this is earth that i have shown with the brown color soil color now the height is given that is about 1 km so the earth is about 1 km away from the drop again we consider that drop is coming from the cloud in the manner so in between somewhere it forms a shape we say that it forms a shape at this height it is of 1 g mass and 
initial velocity has zero it gradually comes to the ground so we say that when range comes in this manner out of that we will consider one drop here this drop will come to ground it also forms we say when it falls on the ground it will have certain velocity that is v they have given 50 meter per second so when it hits the ground it will have this much speed so first of all we will change we will find that what is the change in its kinetic energy as far as the information we can say that delta k is one half m v square minus one half m u square now we have u equals to zero while v equals to 50 so we can say this is equals to 1 by 2 into the mass 1 gram that is 10 raised to minus 3 kilogram so we are given this that is 10 raised to minus 3 and speed that is 50 square now this is equals to what that is 50 square is about 2500 and it is divided by 2 so it will be 1250 with 10 raised to minus 3 power so it will be 1250 into 10 raised to minus 3 so it would be 1.25 joules so first of all the change in kinetic energy will be 1.25 joule here we already have considered that the initial speed of the drop is zero now we also consider that suppose gravitational force is a constant that is acting on this drop so that w that is acting in downward direction is always equals to m g h initial height they have given us that is one kilometer that is about 10 raised to 3 meter so when we consider it in our question we can say that that work done is equals to m g h so here that work done by the gravitational acceleration that work done by the gravity is equals to m g and h here for arbitrary we are taking g as a 10 so mass is given 10 raised to minus 3 g that we will take as a 10 and h h is given as a 10 raised to 3 meter that is 1 kilometer so ultimately here the work done by the gravitational acceleration or gravitational force turns to be 10 joule this is very interesting result because the change in its kinetic energy is 1.25 joule while the work done by the gravitational force is 10 joule so from the work energy theorem we have very nice observation that we can say that from work energy theorem w is equals to delta k so total w here for the given case we can say that here w is equals to wg plus some resistive force that we want to find is equals to delta k now obviously we want to find out this resistive force that we producing some resistance so that w r is equals to delta k minus w g now what is delta k that we have already find out that is 1.25 joule minus 
wg is about 10 joule so that that unknown resistive force if we say it as a wr and the work done by it will be minus 8.75 joule so work done by the unknown resistive force will be minus 8.75 joule which is negative that indicates that the resistive force is always in the opposite direction of the motion so this is your answer one that is work done by the gravitational force this is your answer two that is work done by the unknown resistive force so this is for the answer of example number 6.2